Hey garden friends, welcome on back to Flower Patch. Today I'm going to sow my controversial purple tomatoes. I'm going to take cuttings from this piece of Lady Banks rose. I have more in here. And I am going to sow my French marigolds that I got when we went to Lowe's last week. So come on along and we'll chit chat about a few things and I'll show you how I'm going to do this. Nothing fancy. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and or share with your friends. They may like something I do here today. Okay, let's get rolling on this. I'm gonna put this up here. That is my wave petunias. I'm still gonna get those potted up. I didn't realize I was gonna do a video today. I just knew I had to get these roses done. So, we went to my father-in-law's yesterday because he had this Lady Banks rose. It had not been pruned in probably a decade. It was massive. I say was, because we worked on that. Um, yeah, I'll show a picture of it. Hopefully it turned out. But it was growing up and into and over an orange tree that has the most delicious oranges. And we needed to get it out of that tree. The trunk, the trunk of this rose at the base was, I swear, huge. It was bigger than around than my leg. And um, yeah, it was just massive, but gorgeous. It's in full bloom. You know, if you know the Lady Banks, the yellow one, it just is filled with tiny little yellow flowers early than, earlier than most other roses bloom. So it was just, it was fantastic. But we had to tackle it. We would have liked to have tackled it sooner before it went into bloom, but that didn't happen. So now I brought home a bunch of pieces for myself to root, because I would love to put one up anywhere around here. You know, I love my roses. But also there was a um, Sally Holmes rose right there too that I brought home some cuttings of. Now the beauty of um, Lady Banks is it's thornless. So when I was pulling all the canes out, my husband was cutting them, I was pulling them out and piling them up, and I didn't bring my gloves. I didn't have to worry about being shredded by thorns. Um, yeah, and there's also, did I tell you? I might not have mentioned it yet, but there is a white version of the yellow, which is pretty too. But I have a white climbing rose that's um, beautiful all summer long. Now the Lady Banks rose, they only bloom in the spring, the one time, but it is such a massive bloom. and the the before it gets overgrown it's very delicate you see how small these canes are they're not very big at all so i'm just going to cut this one here i'm going to trim off all the little leaves it looks pretty wilty because you know sitting in a baggie is not the best thing for it and i'm going to cut it into like six inch pieces i'm not going to be super careful about it now i have my root stimulant in this pail and I am going to soak it in the water it's diluted down and let those ends soak up some of that and even though there's no roots this can only help this process so now these usually when you're going to root roses you like to get like a pencil size um, piece but I mean around, you know, pencil size around. Uh, these don't grow that way. And I couldn't find any that were really pencil size, even some of the, and the bigger ones were woody. You didn't want woody. Uh, right now, I don't anyway. So I am just cutting these. I'm not cutting an angle on the bottom and straight on the top to keep them um, separated from which part is top, which is bottom, because I'm sticking them right in here as I'm cutting them, and so I know. Um, I don't need to do that extra step and take that extra time. So I like to take as many as I can so that if I get a 50% rooting rate, I'm doing great. If I, you know, I'll at least get one, I know, but I usually get at least 50 to 80%. And come this summer, I'll show you another way to do it that's really super simple. Um, it's almost stupid simple. So, yeah, it is when you're pruning your roses then in the summer, especially right after the first bloom. Now this one, you see the bigger leaves? This one is the Sally Holmes. 
Now I do want to trim off a little bit at the bottom because I want to make sure that it's fresh so that it can soak up uh, this water and get ready to roll. And I will cut off um, the excess leaves. You don't need the leaves at all. And what I'm, why I want to do that, cut it off. Now, if you can see there, you see it's kind of healed over. I, I can't see in the camera right now, the sun's in my eyes, so I can't see if it did show you. But yeah, that stops the water going up. And um, roses are, and like other plants, they immediately want to heal any wound. And this one's the same way. So that's why I'm cutting it. Cutting it at an angle, which is not absolutely necessary. I just do it that way because um, that way if it sits flat on the bottom of the tub, it doesn't block it. So it sits at an angle. This one is already cut at an angle, but I'm going to cut it again. Now these bigger ones with the bigger leaves, these are all Sally Holmes. Now here is one. You see how it is got this juncture? Now it is said, and I cannot attest to it, that it will root faster when you have that section there on attached. Who knows? But it's worth a try since I was able to get that section. Now these were blooming. Now a lot of times you'll hear pe people say wait until after it's done blooming to take your cuttings but sometimes you don't have the option. So doing it this way works very well. I had um, a wet paper towel inside of my Ziploc bag to keep them moist because I knew I wasn't going to be able to get right out here right after we got home because it's usually late when we get home. Excuse me. Um, so that would keep them moist long enough. Okay, so I trimmed all these off. We're going to let them soak for a little bit in here before we do much more with them. And I'll just put this all back. Paper band, these rubber bands I put in there so when I, I take a bunch of cuttings, I can keep them all in the, in the same bag and I'll wrap this different bundles with the uh, rubber bands. It keeps them apart. But these ones, I didn't really need to do that because I could tell by the structure of the stem. Alrighty. So we're getting those soaked. Now this, while those are soaking, I am going to sow my purple tomatoes. Now these are the ones that are the genetically modified. It, a tomato was spliced with a um, snapdragon um, to modify it so that it has more antioxidants when you eat it. So it made it healthier. Now a lot of people, they hear the term GMO, they immediately shut down their brain and think, oh no, they're trying to kill me. Or you see a lot of people, they have these uh, conspiracy theories that government's trying to kill us, et cetera, by doing this and making it supposedly acceptable. Um, you know what, believe what you want. But for me, that's a bunch of hooey. And I have no fear because this is not like a chemical spliced into the genetics. This is These are two plants and you could eat both of them. So I don't see what could be the problem. I could be totally wrong. But you know what? I don't think it's going to kill me. So the mice that they did the testing on, um, I just dropped. They actually were healthier and lived longer. So even the testing shared that they it did what they had intended was to produce a healthier, more nutritious plant. And in light of you know, the amount of kids that are starving, et cetera, the lack of nutrition in our food, even those of us who grow organically, um, it doesn't have the nutrition that we, that was available to us. What, what is it now? 2024, back like in the fifties and sixties. Um, there's one, did I miss one there? Okay. So it can only help us if it truly is better nutritionally. So, yeah, I'm not afraid of trying it, whatever. Some people are afraid they'll cross-pollinate, disrupt, you know, the heirloom varieties, etc. I'm not. Uh, we're working on a vertical grow system for commercial growing. And there are numerous seed banks 
and they have several varieties protected, the heirlooms included. They're in countries around the world. Um, I'm not worried about it. So, yeah, it's funny because I wanted to say this. Now, you'll see companies advertising or people asking, are these non-GMO seeds when they're going to buy seeds? This is, this tomato, the very first GMO seed available to the public. All other seeds are non-GMO. So you don't have to worry about it. The rest is marketing, meaning if they say, oh, guaranteed non-GMO seeds. Yeah, all seeds are non-GMO that are available to you and me. Very first ones. So there's no worries for you to go out and start all those seeds you see, even the ones that are hybrids, etc. I love heirloom seeds. You know I love vintage roses. You know I love all things, you know, in different varieties, but... I'm not afraid of the newfangled, the hybrids, the whatever. I love them all. Um, as long as they'll grow for me. If it makes them tougher for me, I'm game. Okay, let's see. I'm looking for a container to put this in to soak it up. I bottom water and let the, let the water soak up, and then um, the plants can do their thing. Now, this is, a, this, this is a tray of seed starting mix that I had um, already pre-soaked. So that's all ready to go. It'll probably be leaking out here in a minute. And I'm just gonna put these in here to soak up. I sowed six. And so if I get six plants to come up, which I should, they're fresh seeds. Um, I don't want six of these because I just don't have room. So I will probably give some away to people who are brave enough to try them and uh, not worry about them being GMO. Okay, two things down. That is still soaking. I want them to soak. Okay, in this tray here, I am going to plant the French marigolds. And I've never been a real huge fan of marigolds. I'm sorry if you are. Um, but I've never really enjoyed the oranges and the yellows much in my garden. Um, just a few things that I had, like um, Black Eyed Susans I loved. I love etc. But for some reason, marigolds never wowed me. Um, just flung a bunch. Uh, but this year, I wanted to make sure I planted some in amongst other plants because they are good. The French marigolds supposedly do help with nematodes, etc. I've not had any issues, but it can't hurt. Plus, the orange blooms, when you feed them to your chickens, they make the yolks yellower, oranger, and uh, sturdier, and it just... It's pretty neat looking. So, um, yeah, I wanted to grow some this year. And I have different areas to put them in. They're tough. The deer don't seem to like them, etc. Um, I was reading a new on the market garden book, pretty new, about growing, you know, beginners growing flowers. And it had listed petunias as a deer-resistant plant. I have to... Uh, tell you that's not accurate. It is not even close to being deer resistant. Now, deer will eat just about anything if they're hungry enough. But in my garden, they, they love roses, they love a whole bunch of things, but they will go right past everything else to eat the petunias first. So that was kind of a misleading statement. Um, yeah. They're not deer resistant at all. And I'm assuming it's because sometimes um, the leaves can have that fuzzy quality that supposedly deer won't, don't like. Um, some do, some petunias do, some do not. So go with that. I'm just gonna cover these on the marigold. I should read it, see how deep. I just usually sprinkle stuff on, but I should tell you how to do it accurately. Uh, five to eight days germination, pretty good. Spacing 12 inches, height, Days to bloom, full sun, and it doesn't give it a depth. Oh, quarter inch. Okay. So I'm just going to sprinkle it on here. I'm not going to be too precise. I never am. And I grow just fine. Now, the only things that I had accidentally had been sowing too deeply or something like that was um, sweet peas. It'll say on there half an inch. Um, but I found that I, if I sowed them shallower, they worked better for me. So you go with what works, not always what's on the instruction packet. But anyway, so this one, this probably isn't a full qu quarter inch. 
So I'm just pressing them in. Now I notice some people will say just sow them, leave things, you know, just sprinkle soil on top and don't firm them in. Um, and the whole, I guess, um, opinion on that is because you don't want the soil to be firm beneath them. Um, I haven't found that to be accurate either. When you press them in, you get good contact with the soil. You will have better germination if you have good contact. Now, as far as the looseness of the soil, the opinion there is that it gives the roots an easier, you know, a chance to really get down easier. Well, when I was soil blocking, you can press those things really, really tight, and the roots do just fine. And I was just reading, oh, maybe a few weeks ago, I'm always reading stuff, and it talked about the hardier plants, seedlings, were because they had to exert themselves. Like the roots are stronger if they have to put out effort to get down into the soil. And when you think about when we direct sow outside, we're not making it light and fluffy. We are, it's soil. So they really have to work to get down into it and the ones we start out in the garden many times are much stronger than the ones we start indoors. And then we have to harden off. So start right from the beginning. Firm them in. I don't mean squish them in, but make sure they have good contact. And oh, that's what I had read that on Annie's annual when Annie was getting started with starting her seeds and everything. Um, she found, because she would just lightly do it, like is often told, and one day her cat had walked across all of her trays or some of the trays. The ones the cat walked across germinated much better and were healthier than the ones that the cat didn't walk on. And she came to the conclusion that it was because the pressure of being firm down next to the soil was better for the seeds to germinate that way. So we'll go with Annie's cat. So, okay, this one is soaking. These are the tomatoes. I probably should make myself a little tag because when I get them on the rack, sometimes I forget what I've done. So this is purple tomato. I'm not going to do the name purple tomato. I will know what it is. I write what is quick and easy. Okay, I just had finished doing my video on taking cuttings from lavender and rosemary and some of it didn't turn out. I had turned off the camera when I thought I was turning it on. Um, so I don't know if I'll have to remake it. So I may have to go get another rosemary and lavender. I'll show you, this is the one that I finished with. See, there's not a whole lot I could take cuttings from on this. I do need to repot this. The, the soil is very hard and compressed and I can only think that maybe, excuse me, I gotta pick this up. Um, it might be a little bit root bound. So, eeks. I have sticky traps all in here because the fungus gnats have really been bad this year. Um, and here's the rosemary I started to do. I took the cuttings from this rosemary. There's actually three plants in here. And I was going to divide this up and repot, eat, pot up each one individually. And or I was going to wash off the roots and I might put it in one pot and show you how I braid the trunks to make a topiary. But um, I haven't fully decided yet on those two. Now, uh, that's almost done soaking. We'll get to potting those up in a minute. But I wanted to share with you, you know the delphiniums that I showed you how to take cuttings from out in the garden and pot it up. And there was one that had nothing on it. And so it didn't even have leaves. See this little piece? here and look what it's doing it's putting up growth so it's doing just fine right there so it's putting up another delphinium just fine these are the pinky lavender ones now the last couple nights um night before last it got down to 23 degrees last night it was 28 degrees i think so it got very very cold out and all of these things in here are doing great it's why i love my little greenhouse uh, if the sun comes out, it gets a little warm in here, um, and then it does turns cold. It stays warm long enough that the super cold, it will get as cold as outside in here, but it's for a very brief amount of time, very brief. So most things that are tougher will be okay out here. Now, I was going to show you, I potted up 
some gumfrina that I started from seed inside and I brought out because I thought, well, I'm out of room and I need to put it out. And so here's some of that. This is the gumfrina. And they did find out here. And what else did I put out here? Hmm. I put my sweet peas over in my bespoke greenhouse. I was, I commented about, I didn't know what to call it. Calling it the little DIY hit greenhouse or the little greenhouse um, didn't seem right. It needed a name. And then a gentleman, I think it was a gentleman, had said, what, what you mean the bespoke greenhouse? And I thought, oh, that sounds kind of fancy schmancy. And it deserves a fancy schmancy name. Uh, that, that's the one, and I'll show you a picture of it, that my husband built for me. And it, we put it in the veggie garden because I need to extend my garden season because it, even though I'm a zone 8B, um, I have a very short growing season. And I can use all the help I can get with my tomatoes and peppers. And that's what that was built for. Right now, I need to go look and see if the melt, snow melted away from it. I've been putting the extra plants in there from here of my starts, et cetera, that are getting, taking up more room than I want them to at this moment because it's still going to be uh, April towards, it's probably going to be another six, seven weeks before I can put anything out of here, even the colder, more cold hardy things. Um, so that's that. So this is the marigolds. So I need to make a tag for that. What is this? Oh, this is the flocks I bought. A proven winner's flocks I brought, bought last summer at the end of the season there was a lot of clearance going on and flocks do beautifully for me just absolutely gorgeous in my garden and I'm aiming for things that are pretty much carefree and if things will thrive especially perennials will thrive in your garden that just makes your gardening life easier I set my pen somewhere and I don't know where well I guess I'll use this one this one's about empty oh there it is right on the other side um then it just makes your garden life so much easier if you pick things that will come back, thrive, without much care from you. And that's where I'm aiming. I want the beauty, but I, I need the ease. So this is marigolds. So a lot of times I'll keep the tags. I'll put them in my diary. I haven't done that yet. My garden diary, garden journal. And then I know the names of things. Um, so all, all regular flocks, garden flocks, it doesn't have to be the proven winners. They do beautifully for me too. But these were on sale, clearance prices at the end of the season, and I snapped them up because they're just beautiful and they do so well. And I'm hoping the gophers leave them alone. So far they have, but there was a great big gopher tunnel that went right by some of mine. And you never know what they're going to decide to eat next. Okay, so there is that. So these... There's a lot of them, huh? And I don't want a ton of containers. So I will do a couple of containers and I will do some potting soil for this. Now some people use sand, some people use perlite in potting soil. I'm out of perlite. Um, I have had success many different ways. And so I use what I got. Um, you know what, I might loosen it up a little bit with some vermiculite. Usually I don't use vermiculite a lot for loosening because in the garden it will compress after a while. But to begin with, I think it will work. I, I'll be really careful with watering because the, the first thing or the easiest way to kill cuttings is to overwater, keep them too moist. So, the sand I have is buried under a little bit of snow, and I'm lazy. I don't feel like going out and digging it out, and I just want to get these done. And then I'm going to go watch a movie. So, anyways, let's start with the um, Lady Banks. Lady Banks. I got to put some. Uh, this is Hormex 8. Now, for roses, I use the Hormex 8 instead of a one. one. Um, other rooting hormones, 
have less of the active ingredient. Now this is Bontone 2 Rooting Power by Bonide and the active ingredient is Indole 3 Butylic Acid and this has 0.1%. And on this one, um, it has active ingredient 0.8%. So you can see it's eight times more powerful than this one. And that's why I go ahead, my ring camera going off, um, I go ahead and use the eight because they, they just need a little bit of extra help. So with these the little ones, and I could cut these down, they don't have to be this tall. Don't have to be this tall at all, but I am going to um, snip off, they had little leaf nodes down there, snip off those and I'm going to stick them in here. Now I put it in a separate jar because I do not dip into my container. A lot of people will, but you'll contaminate it. And I don't need that. So I'm actually going to go and take my paintbrush and get it because this is the second node is going to be beneath the soil too. And I want to give it every chance to root. Am I in the camera? Here, put it up here and you can see it. I don't have my other camera up there. So it's just really easy. Poke a hole in the soil, put it down in there, and fill it in, firm it in. The same with this one. I'm going to take it. I'm going to make sure that even the second leaf node has some, and I'm going to sink it down in there. And I'll go it all the way around the pot. You don't need all these different pots. The last ones I did it in, um, I did some of the little six packs. That worked too. And you can cut them shorter to fit under, you know, different um, humidity domes. It, I could go ahead and cut these off. And, you know, just all I do is just cut right above. I'm going to cut right above a leaf node. So that way they could fit. If I want to put a, a humidity dome on it, it would fit over top without having to be too tall. Because under my lights, I have the lights really close to my plants, uh, seedlings, so that they don't get leggy. So if I want to put them there, then they need to be shorter. Okay, this one. I'm just making sure I'm close to the lowest leaf node. Now my other roses, I should have brought them out to show you, and maybe I, I'll take you in. They're all doing great that I did this winter, and what amazed me was it because it was winter. Though, we had a warmer winter, and so they had not hardened off like they normally would for the winter. And um, so they were semi-hardwood. They weren't complete hardwood. And uh, so I think that's why I had the success. And I put them in on the heat mat in the house. I didn't leave them out here. Though, uh, the ones that I have in my bespoke greenhouse, um, they're doing great. And they've been out there since February. Cuttings that I got at the Rose uh, Society. We had a swap of cuttings and I took cuttings and to it and traded. And then I bought some of the cuttings that some gals had already potted up. And it would all it was a lot of fun. And I missed they had another meeting this for this week. And I totally missed it. I don't know how that caught past me. I was trying to pay attention to when we were supposed to have another meeting. I need to be better at that. Okay, so I have it all around the edge of this pot, and then this one, I'm putting this one in. So there we go. They're all in there. These are my, and I'll write it on here, on the pot. These are my lady banks. Oops, one of them went through the hole because I could feel it down there. Okay, lady banks. Now, I need to decide if I want to put these in the house on my rack or if I'm gonna put them out in the bespoke greenhouse next to all the others. Um, you know, I just might try it. It'll take them longer. If they don't have the bottom heat um, and the warmth of the house, it will take them longer to root, but it, but they will root. And we are getting warmer. So, oh, the, so when the sun hits, 
it really heats up the little greenhouse, the bespoke greenhouse, and they might just do fine and fantastic over there. So I think I'll do that. I'm really running out of room on my um, light rack, which is normal this time of year because I'm starting so many things. My basil did really crummy this year. I'm just really disappointed, and usually it does much better. So I, I think I'm going to start some more of that. So let's get this one started. Now I probably will go ahead and cut the leaf off. We don't need the leaf. It adds nothing to it because we want it to focus on um, putting down roots. I should point my camera down so you can see that how I do this a little bit if you haven't seen it before. I've done this with you guys before or at least with my audience, other audience. Uh, okay, we good? Yeah, we're good. So can we see down here? Yeah. Anyways, so basically I tip this up and then I make a hole to put it down in. I don't worry about scraping off the rooting hormone. There's plenty on there. There'll be remain plenty on there. And this is one of them. Like I said it has the little juncture. So we're going to Put that, make sure that part's underneath the soil, etc. I should, when I dig these up, um, show you where the roots come from off of these. I may do that with, I've got the ones in the house that I know got rooted. And um, show you how that looks. Yep, you know, propagating plants can be addictive. But what is so cool about it is this, you know, I aim for unpatented, of course, I've told you that before. And the reason is when it's under patent, it's, you know, they patent it for a reason. Patenting process is very expensive. People who uh, breed roses, they spend 10 years breeding a new rose and you've got all that time invested, the materials, the testing of the rose, the seedlings, because not everyone makes it past all the trials. So you've got, you know, the labor involved, you know, it's just, that's their work. So it's like trying to ask people when you, um, let me see how I want to say this. I've had people say, oh, well, if I've bought the rose, then I have every right to propagate it. The patent process is to protect the person who bred it to help them recoup their costs as far as breeding. It is their business. So it's kind of like someone asking you to go to work for free. I think you know where I'm going with that. So that's why I respect their patent. Plus my husband. Let's get these all done. I know some people, I've had commenters say, you talk too much. Okay, don't watch. <laughs> uh, now, there's a lot of trolls out there. I don't let people like that bug me. I just erase them so it doesn't upset my other viewers. Now, this one is awful skinny. So I think this is actually a Lady Banks. So I'm going to go ahead and put it over in this one. I do not remember getting any of the Sally Holmes that were that small. So... I will look out the door really quick and see if the snow has melted away from, holy cow, I'm crooked. Away from the door of the other greenhouse where I'm planning on putting these. I could leave them in here for now and not worry about it, but that is that. Let's see, this one, I will put Sally Holmes on it and I'll use the blue pant and I'll have to do one of these. One of these little spiky things. Now, if you want to find unusual plants, which I love individu uh, individual, I mean, unusual plants that are hardy, easy to grow. Some are natives, like for California. Go to Annie's Annual's website. They have some of the neatest plants. And everything I have bought there has just thrived. And it's just amazing. You won't find many of these elsewhere. What I love, a lot of the things at Annie's is they've propagated them themselves. They're not from a big greenhouse brought in. 
their propagation, their seed starting, everything is right there. And most of the stuff has is outside, so it's really tough. It's not been pampered indoors. So um, yeah, it's really, really tough stuff. So it takes right off when you put it out in your garden. Let me look out the door really quick. Well, there's still a little bit of snow in front of the door and I'm not gonna go out there and dig it out. So these will stay in here for the moment. I will take in the marigolds and the tomatoes to put on my rack and we'll call it a day. I do.